All right, guys, so we've just gone through isometric exercises and technique. Now, I've just specified that there's a continuum of strength training. How do we know when, it, when you're ready to progress from, you know, perhaps the seated isometrics to the standing isometrics or the double leg isometrics to the single leg isometrics? Because obviously, there's more load as you go from sitting down to standing. There's more load as you go from double leg stance to single leg stance. Essentially, double leg stance is 50% of your body weight. So how do we know when to progress? Now, I think that's an excellent question, and perhaps it's, it's one of the questions that we need to ask ourselves more. Whether it's return to sport or whether it's with progressing strengthening, I think we all get a bit carried away with how quickly we go through these progressions as a runner or a keen sportsman when we're dealing with Achilles tendinopathy. We often... Uh, uh, ignore pain and ignore symptoms and ignore signs and just give give into passion and uh, just keep keep ticking along and and I think this is where we um, see often a lot of people ending up with chronic tendinopathy. So um, how do we know how to progress and when the right time is to progress? Well, there's a few um, studies now and um, I've heard Peter Maliaris talk about it a lot. It's morning stiffness. So if your morning stiffness is generally uh, improving or it's getting um, get better, then it's a good sign. It means what you did yesterday, the tendon coped with, and it's and it's um, slowly slowly um, absorbing that load um, a little bit better than it used to. Now this takes time, um, so don't necessarily expect to see an improvement in morning stiffness after um, after one day of exercises. That's definitely not going to happen. It's it's more after um, uh, several weeks. So, morning stiffness is a great great indicator. The the visa visa A questionnaire is a great indicator as well. If there's a general um, uh, six point to nine point improvement on the visa A, then it's generally a good sign. Um, it's it's generally associated with an improvement in tendinopathy rather than a bit of luck or um, uh, interator uh, reliability. Um, perhaps one of the biggest ones I go with also is um, perceived rating of pain. So, um, so a patient's perceived rating of pain is is another huge indicator of whether we progress or not. Now, this perceived rating of pain, I think you need to measure it during the execution of the exercise. So as the patient does the exercise, how sore does it look? How sore does it feel? Now, obviously, every patient's uh, rating of pain is subjective, um, and some people have greater pain intolerances than others um, for various reasons. Some people are quite hypersensitive to, um, to their Achilles might be quite hypersensitive, um, uh, and others, um, they might they might be um, you know quite quite tough and just want to compete. So they're just sort of they're willing themselves on to feel nothing, and they they're quite optimistic and positive, and they're just sort of um, they're underrating the pain. Now you you can you can tend to see that as a clinician, um, and you can tend to um, uh, make a bit of a call on that over a, a week or two once you get to know. Uh, the person, um, but generally, I've 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 found that um, when you, when someone's starting to say a seven out of ten when they when they're executing the exercise, then that exercise is um, pro- most likely to be too hard, um, and so you're not ready for that exercise. Um, then, but if they say it's sort of more a three out of ten. Um, then that's my indicator then that that's a good amount of pain. Like you're going to get pain. You've got to expect some pain. We're trying to stress the tendon. If we just operate it at zero out of 10, then we're not stressing it. It's not going to um, adapt. It's not going to change. It's not going to get stronger. It's not going to get healthier. It's not going to get that donut of good tissue around it. So we've got to stress it, but I think it, you need to be reasonable with that stress. You don't want to stress it so much that you're limping for the whole day and the next morning you're stiffer than you were the morning before. Um, so that generally indicates um, that you are you have overdone it. Um, so you want to wake up the next morning and, and feel like you're sort of um, stiff for just as long as you have been and you're not regressing. Um, 
so, I mean, if you do the exercise and you're stiff um, a little bit after it for about um, five, ten minutes, then I think that's fine as long as it's not for the rest of the day. So, if you've progressed um, through the continuum and you take the next step, and your pain is only a 3 out of 10 and it generally resolves after 5-10 minutes and it's not hanging around for the rest of the day. Your morning stiffness the next morning feels pretty good. Um, and uh, you, I mean if you use the Visa A questionnaire and, and, and that's, it hasn't regressed then I think you're um, going at it the, the right pace and, it, and it's time to change. It's time to change exercises. Um, it's time to progress the exercises. So Subjectively, your rating of pain is a big thing, um, and I generally go by that a lot. And uh, otherwise, I I go go with the questionnaire, the Visa A questionnaire as well, and and someone's uh, morning stiffness rating the the day after they did the exercise. Um, so I think there are a few good uh, little cues and prompts to to use to monitor whether I oh, okay, it's right to change or hang on, I've been really stirred up by this exercise. Um, it, was, it felt oh, like a bit of a 7 out of 10 and, and the next morning I, I was limping around for half an hour. That, that, that's a bit too aggressive, a bit too quick. Um, you've got to slow, slow your um, strength training down. All right, I'll uh, see you in the next few days. Um, the next video I want to do is um, about the next stage of strengthening, the next stage along the continuum. So after isometrics, I generally go to isotonics. All right, I'll chat soon.